Good morning, Seven East. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of Free Lippy Radio. It is our historic tenth episode. I can't believe we're already in double digits. Well, today is just kind of a continuation of yesterday. Um, on the air, and our objectives for today: a one audience Q and A. Got a bunch of questions yesterday that I'll be answering live on air, live-ish. Uh, then Bill of Rights Review, I'll go through all 10 of the First Amendments, for all 10 of the First 10 Amendments, a.k.a. the Bill of Rights. And then we will wrap our show up today with the memes of the day. Got three timely and relevant memes for you to round off the show. Uh, let's get started with the Q&A. Audience Q&A. Question one. I believe this is from Jack, period one. According to the Freedom of Assembly, how come the government is telling us not to meet in groups? Doesn't the Freedom of Assembly say we can? This is a very good question. So on the face of it, um, telling us not to assemble is a violation of the First Amendment. If you wanted to sue the government about what is going on right now, you would actually have a very good case, pretty strong case. Um, it says in the Constitution, First Amendment, you have the right or freedom of assembly. That means you can meet with who you want, pretty much where you want, um, especially if it's in your own home or on private property. Now, when there's emergency situations, a court usually gives the government the benefit of the doubt, so it might be harder to win a lawsuit. But technically, looking at the letter of the law, yes, you're right. Freedom of assembly means that we should be able to assemble. Um, but given the circumstances right now, people are kind of um, playing it extra safe, and people really aren't willing to um, fight the government on this. Many Some people are, but I guess many people are so concerned about um the infection and things like that, they're more concerned about that and not really freedom of assembly. But if someone wanted to sue, that would be an interesting court case because I think they would have a very good shot at winning because this is very clear in the first ceremony of the freedom of assembly. Second question, this is Jack in period six. Do you think that school will be postponed longer than April 15th? It's possible. No one really knows, but it is possible. So April 15th, if you don't know, by looking ahead of the calendar, it's actually a Wednesday. Um, it, it would seem odd to start school on a Wednesday. So if it's clear that the situation is getting better, I can totally see the state government extending the closure to the weekend at least, maybe. Let us prepare a little bit extra for return on Monday, April 20th. Or alternatively, I could see it being pushed back one or two more weeks if the situation isn't as good as predicted. Um, the experts are predicting, from what I've seen in the news, that at least in New York, um, the worst the crisis seems to be will be early April. So I think after the second, after the first or second week of April, our chances of going back are much better than they have been because things will be getting better after that. Um, if I had to guess though, I would probably say no earlier than the 20th. That's just my hunch, but I could be wrong. And actually, I hope I'm wrong because um, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of just doing everything from home. I want to go back in person. I haven't worn a tie in three weeks. Can you believe it? Uh, third question. Um, are we still getting report cards at the end of the marking period? This is Melanie period five. Yes, you're still getting a report card. The report cards will just show a more limited amount of work, obviously. Uh, we still need to figure out as a school, not just me, as a school, the point values that we're going to count for the distance learning assignments. We mark it right now as M for missing, R for received. But there will be report cards of the third marking period. It just will have less detail because we just haven't been in school as much. We haven't had the tests and so on. And I think this is our last question from Marta, period one. What will happen to our projects in the beginning of the year that are in the classroom? Some stuff of mine I'd like to get back. Well, you may take them home as soon as you return. I wanted the Explore projects to be taken before the new MGA was due so we would have room in the class for the new projects. Anyone who would like to leave their project and donate it as an example for next year's students is welcome to, and I'd be very thankful for it. Uh, but if you want to take it home, you may. And I have actually said in the weeks leading up to this absence that those who wanted to take it home could. Uh, so if you're wondering again, if you could take yours home, yes, the answer is yes. You may take yours home as soon as we get back. Okay, that is our end of our audience Q&A for today. Now, Bill of Rights review. So I went over the instructions for the Bill of Rights assignment yesterday, but now I want to look at all the Bill of Rights one by one and talk about some exceptions or some ideas that you might have been thinking of, kind of offer a commentary on the Bill of Rights. So I'm going to X out go into my Bill of Rights slideshow, present. So, Amendment 1. 
all about the freedom of expression, freedom of speech, religion, press, assembly, protest, our petitions. Seems pretty clear, it's very broad. Uh, basically, it's freedom of expression, to summarize the whole thing. Uh, now, some of you might be wondering, well, hmm, freedom of religion, well, what if my religion says I have to kill so-and-so? Well, um, doesn't mean you get to do that, because generally how the amendments have been understood is that um, your freedom can't violate someone else's freedom. So if someone else has the freedom and the right to live, you saying that, that you want to kill them as part of your religion, that would not count, because it's you're saying that practicing your freedom would take away someone else's freedom. So there has to be a, a balance to it. That's generally how the court and uh, constitutional commentators have seen things. Um, Second Amendment, right to bear arms, is a very pretty uh, one, pretty controversial one that's always talked about these days. Um, in terms of all the, the gun debates and things like that. Uh, but the right to bear arms, you have the right to own guns. States have the right to create militias using those who live within the state. Um, so this one, um, I guess most of the debate revolves around like what type of gun are you should you be allowed to own um there are certain exceptions and limits that the government has put on this amendment uh obviously they would not allow people to own like bombs and really just massive uh military pieces of equipment um but it has been pretty much established in the supreme court um that people do have a right to own some kind of gun and generally in america that has been a very broad category um that could mean a handgun and that could be mean um other uh, weapons that you might see more in a military setting. Uh, but generally, um, the Second Amendment has been interpreted rather broadly, and I think that you would find that in the court, although people who criticize it think it should be reinterpreted more narrowly. Uh, Third Amendment is probably the most irrelevant amendment because we don't really have to deal with it that much. Um, this is obviously a response to the Quartering Act, uh, back when the British soldiers could go into someone's home and basically force themselves to live there and force people to feed them and give them supplies and stuff like that. Amendment 3 pretty much does not apply anymore because we never deal with situations like this. Although it is interesting that a few years ago, I think maybe even sooner than the past year or two, um, there was a case, I believe in California, I could be wrong though, where um, a police officer uh, was trying to do a stakeout of a suspect and they demanded to be let into someone's house in order to like camp out and watch the suspect. And the person refused, and they sued, I believe, the police department under the Third Amendment, saying their Third Amendment rights were violated. We had a police officer force themselves into my home to watch somebody else. Um, I'm not sure the exact outcome of the case, but it's interesting that they used the Third Amendment as their reason to sue the government in this case. Fourth Amendment, hugely relevant, especially with criminal stuff. So anytime you see in a crime TV show where the police want to search somebody's house or search somebody's car... Uh, if the suspect or person being questioned he knows their rights, first thing they say is, do you have a warrant? Because the government in this country under the Fourth Amendment is not allowed to search anything of yours unless they have a warrant. So if someone, police officer, comes to your door and says, can I look inside and see whatever? You have the right to say no. They can't punish you for it. In fact, they get punished if they do it without a warrant. You could actually sue them for that. Um... And they can only get a warrant if they go to a judge and they present a probable cause. Meaning that they can't just go to some random person, get a warrant, and search all their stuff. They have to get a reason. There has to be a reason why they're searching this person. This person has to have evidence that indicates them as a possible suspect or leading to the arrest of a suspect. Um, this is to protect your privacy. It's to protect you from a government that might try to frame you for a crime. It's kind of protecting you and your property from being just searched through. It protects your right to privacy, really. Um, and it's especially helpful to make sure you have a fair trial in criminal cases. Uh, Amendment 5. Um, can't be put on trial for the same thing twice. It's called double jeopardy. So anytime a trial happens and you're on trial for a crime, the government does not have an infinite amount of times so they can try you. They have one chance to present their case, and if they don't make it, you walk free. This is designed to help people and give the benefit of the doubt to the accused um, because innocent until proven guilty. Um, just imagine a situation where if you are found not guilty, they can just put you on trial again and again and again. Uh, they wanted to avoid that. They thought it would be very corrupt if that happened. So they said, no, what? One trial. You can't be put on trial for the same thing twice. Um, and the most interesting part of the Fifth Amendment, you cannot be forced to speak against yourself if you are being charged with a crime. If you see on movies and TV shows, uh, one of the first things they say to a suspect 
uh, when they put the handcuffs on them is you have the right to remain silent. That means that they're reminding you that you have the right to not say a single thing. You don't have to admit to anything. You don't have to say anything that could incriminate you in the crime. Um, that is done because uh, oftentimes, sometimes suspects might get tricked into saying something that they didn't mean. It's all designed to protect possibly innocent people. So if you're innocent, you might slip up and say something that they might misinterpret um, and use it to charge you with a crime. You have the right to remain silent. And then usually when you have a lawyer, um, the lawyer will come in and help you um, answer the questions in a way that makes the proceedings go to your benefit. Uh, okay, Sixth Amendment. Uh, so you have a right to a quick and public trial by jury in criminal cases. So that means they cannot drag out the legal process for years and years and years. You can't be on trial for 10 years for a single crime. And you can't have a secret trial that's held in secret and no one knows about it. It's public. The media can cover it. That's why we have reporters and even painters inside the courtroom painting the scene. It's public. It's a public act. It's supposed to be witnessed by the public. Uh, also have a right to a lawyer. So also part of those rights that they read you on those crime shows. You have the right to an attorney. If you can't afford one, the state will provide one for you. Um, so you can pay for a high-priced lawyer um, if you can afford one. But if you don't have any money, the state gives you a lawyer um, to help you. Um, and you have the right to face the person accusing you of a crime. So someone can't anonymously accuse you of a crime and then you don't have no idea what, what they're accusing you of or who it is. You have the right to face the person who's accusing you. So a lot of these amendments are designed to help you in the justice system. Amendment 7. You have the right to a jury trial even in a non-criminal or civil cases. So um, there are kinds of trials where there are not crimes. So for example, a, a civil court case might be um, like a divorce court or something. You have a right to a jury even in that circumstance. Although oftentimes people um, get rid of the requirement. They, they willingly say, you know, we don't, we don't want a jury. We don't really want to go that route. They just want to get it over with so they have the judge do it. Um, that's what you see on these daytime courtroom shows like Judge Judy. They have waived their right to a jury trial and they're allowing the judge to make their decision. It's just a way of things to get things done faster. Um, it's usually for smaller cases. But they do have a right to a jury, so they can if they really wanted one. Amendment 8. I'm very happy for this one, and everyone should be. Um, if you're arrested, the government can't force you to pay an insane amount of bail or fine money. So let's say um, you get arrested for littering. The government can't say that you have to pay a million dollars to leave jail. Um, the Founding Fathers recognized that you could use bail as a way to basically... Let's see. Use bail as a way to um, keep people um, in jail when they shouldn't be. And um, part of this is also trying to avoid all cruel and unusual punishments. Um, so, for example, you cannot be tortured in the United States for a crime. Prisoners have to be treated humanely and well, um, because if you look at the history of especially Europe in the Middle Ages and earlier, um, criminals were not treated well. Even people who were just suspected of crimes treated pretty horribly, so they wanted to make sure people were treated humanely. Um, Amendment 9. Okay, so just because the Constitution isn't specifically mentioned you have a certain right to do something, that doesn't mean you don't have the right to do it. So this is kind of um, saying that if you want to do something, you can. You can presume it is legal unless there is a law against it. So the opposite might be everything is illegal except what is said in the Constitution, but Amendment 9 says no. You presume everything is illegal and allowed unless there's a law against it. And finally, Amendment 10, um, any powers or rights not given to the federal government belong to the states and people. So it's basically saying any power not given to the federal government or the central government of the Constitution is given back to the people. Those are the Bill of Rights. Um, if you have any specific questions about scenarios that might come up, uh, please ask me. I'd be loved, I would love to answer them. That's your Bill of Rights. And now I'm going to wrap up today with our memes of the day. Three timely memes for you to round out the show. First one, really a public service announcement. Don't forget to wash your hands. Everyone should be washing their hands. And if we lived like Legos did, this would be a horrifying thing. I don't even know how this person is manipulating the controls on the machine. Please wash your hands. Don't disconnect them. Wash them. Uh, meme number two of the day. Oh, this is great. This is encouraging. As a lover of wildlife and animals, um, now that everyone in Italy is quarantined, the natural wildlife has returned to water in the forest. Nice to see a pepperoni pizza in its natural habitat. Um, surely they will 
proliferate and grow in the wild. Uh, really touching to see that. And last, but certainly not least, oh yeah, some news. Yes, so we've had three weeks of quarantine, and the government, as we may know from watching the news, has extended it to four weeks. So they got that wild draw for fun stuff to end the show. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Please make sure, if you're interested in playing the Gim Kit game today, that you're looking on Classroom around 12.20, 12.30. I want to start the game at 12.30 sharp. So see you then. This is Mr. LaPree signing off from Episode 10 of Free Lippy Radio.